how much do you think your shoes are really worth? And what is the true value of your sneakers? This is the question I want to answer today, but I do want to provide a more objective perspective. The footwear industry in itself is a very subjective niche. And what I mean by that is that the value of a sneaker is largely based off of people's opinions, such as how much hype does a shoe have? How popular is a shoe? How does a shoe look? And how does a shoe make someone feel? But for this video, I want to more so dissect this concept of if we can identify the value of the shoe in a more objective lens. So that's what I want to do in this video today. With that being said, let's get into it. So first off, the most important question we need to ask ourselves is what makes a sneaker valuable? I would say that depending on who you ask, value can be interpreted in many different ways. For example, someone who resells shoes looks at value in terms of how much profit they can get out of the shoe. A sneaker influencer may value a sneaker based off of how many likes and how much popularity they have when they post the shoe. An athlete might judge the sneaker's value based off of how well they perform in that shoe, and so on and so forth. But what I want to propose in this video is there are actually three different types of numeric values that you can calculate based on your sneakers. This first value is very straightforward. You basically just ask yourself, how much did I pay out of pocket to buy these sneakers? Not how much they go for retail, but how much did you literally pay out of your own pocket to purchase those sneakers? This number in itself is a very strong representation on the value that you, yourself, placed on those shoes. So quick example, I have these Reebok Aztrex. These retail for $90, but I was fortunate to only pay $30 for these shoes. That means that I placed a value of $30, not $90. I placed a value of $30 for these shoes right here. On the other extreme, you have those Travis Scott ones that retail for like $200. Uh, if you've paid the retail or resale price of $1,500, that means you placed a value of $1,500 for those shoes. And that is the apparent value that you internally place for those specific sneakers. I think the literal amount of money that you're willing to shell out of your own pocket is a strong representation on the certain values that you have placed on those shoes. It should pretty much factor not only your emotional investment, but your logical investment, your logistical stance on the shoe, and then you convert it into a monetary value. You pretty much factored in how much you like the shoe or how bad you wanted the shoe, how much of an opportunity it is to get that shoe, and you pretty much placed your own price tag on it, and that's a value that pretty much you can only place on it and no one else. All right. This next value is called the net cost. This is pretty much a monetary value as to how much the shoe costed for the entire lifespan that you have owned that shoe. Eventually, if you decide to sell or get rid of the shoe, you factor that selling price into this equation and then you get a net cost. So simply put, you just take the money that you've paid to get the shoe, add the money that you get back from selling the shoe, and then that gives you the net total. So a quick example that I have is that I had a pair of Adidas forums that I ended up selling. I paid $70 for them, but I ended up selling them for $50. So plus $50, and that nets me a total of minus $20. So the total cost of me having owned those shoes for that duration of time was that I ended up losing $20. So one more time for this equation, you do the negative amount of money that you paid for the shoe, in this case, minus 70, and then you add the amount of money that you get back, which is in this case is $50. That gives you the net total of what you paid or profited from that shoe. This equation is very important when it comes to those who are either in the resale business or those who are just on a really strict budget. This number really paints a picture as to a monetary value that you place on the shoe for the duration that you've had or planning to have the shoe. As the saying goes, numbers don't lie, so you really use these numbers to guide your budgeting. All right, the next formula I wanna talk about is price per wear. This is probably my personal favorite formula that dictates the value of my personal sneakers. This is a simple formula that calculates how much that sneaker is worth based on how many times you have worn the shoe. And later I'll tell you why I think this is the most important formula on this list. So the basic formula here is that you take the price that you paid for the shoe and then you simply divide that number by the number of times that you have worn the shoe all together. The final value that you get for this formula is called price per wear which is basically what it says, it's how much did the shoe cost per wear. Pretty self-explanatory, right? So I wanna use these three sneakers as an example. So let's start with these Nike Hirachis right in the middle. These are one of my beater sneakers, which means I really wore these several, several times. I would say I wore these at least once or twice a week for the past two years or so. So for this example, let's just say that I wore these shoes about a hundred times. 
So to calculate price per wear, I pretty much pay $90 for these shoes. If we divide $90 by 100 times, or pretty much I wore these 100 times, that equates to 90 cents. So the price per wear for these Hirachis for me was 90 cents per wear. So based on that calculation, it cost me less than a dollar to wear this shoe each time I wore them. And I would say that's actually a really good investment in my opinion. Let's move on to this next example, the Adidas Ultra Boost. These are some black and silver Ultra Boost that I've actually worn quite a bit. I would say I wore them about once or twice a week for the past year. So for this example, let's just say I wore them 25 times. So the price of these Ultra Boosts were $180. And let's say I wore them 25 times total. So $180 divided by 25 equates to $7.20 per wear. So as much as I do love the Ultra Boost, you can see that that's a huge price difference per wear between these two shoes. Hirachi is 90 cents per wear so far, and the Ultra Boost $7.20 per wear so far. One more example I want to apply to take this uh, concept home is applying this formula to the Bape Skatestas. So these Skatestas retail for $330, which I pay for, and I only wore these shoes once so far. So $330 divided by one time, that means this shoe costed me so far $330 to wear them one time. This formula is a great objective representation of what the value of that shoe is worth based on its usage. It takes into consideration practicality, longevity, and monetary value. If a shoe is practical, then that probably means it's comfortable, it's reliable, and you would probably get hundreds of wears out of them, right? And then in terms of longevity, obviously also, the longer or the more times you wear the shoe and it's still holding up, then longevity-wise, it's proven itself. So this price per wear formula just encapsulates practicality, longevity, and monetary value all in one equation, and it really paints this picture as to the value of this shoe. All in all, for the most part, sneakers are a very subjective and emotionally driven niche. This means that you can't directly measure uh, how you feel about a shoe, how a shoe looks, how much hype it has, but you can to some degree measure practicality, longevity, and profitability based on data and numbers. As the saying goes, numbers don't lie, so think about using these numbers and values and considering those numbers into your calculations to really determine how valuable is that shoe for you. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Based on this, what is your value of your sneakers? If you made it this far into the video, please do me a huge favor, hit that like button, it'll help me out a lot, and consider subscribing for more content on style, sneakers, and science. If you're interested in any other ways that you can look at your sneaker collection in an objective lens, check out some of my older videos, here or here. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.